back to Seen Corbin News. It's now time to go in depth. The election machinery is all fired up in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and is making its way towards December 9 when citizens will go to the polls. On a previous in depth, Director of Carter's Peter Wickham then said favor was leaning towards incumbent Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. And it's been reported that opposition leader Arnim Eustace has been championing the building of a new hospital, but that charge in his campaign is not getting a lot of support. So, has anything changed? We take another look at the situation in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and we have now been joined by political commentator in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Kenrick Kwashi. Welcome to In Depth, Mr. Kwashi. Thank you for having me. Now, has the political rallying in your country began? Yes, of course, they're in full swing. What are the main talking points of those rallies on either side? Um, well, the, the, the incumbent, the ULP, Gerald Gonzalez party, have been talking about building on the work that they have started, such as the international airport. Um, earlier this week, we, actually last week, Thursday, we had set flights of four aircrafts four small aircrafts on the um, international airport, the proposed site, well, where, where it's been constructed. Um, the government has been talking about expanding on its policies in education, offering more scholarships, et cetera, and educational opportunities to young Vincentians. There's, of course, the talk of the of jobs. I mean, unemployment is, is rather high locally in St. Vincent. So they've both, been talk both parties have actually been talking about creating new jobs. The question is, the incumbent has been there for 14 years. Can it deliver, having not done much, per se, for the past 14 years, or the opposition offering hope? And so it's about whether or not Vincentians, who are they going to cast their confidence in? And the opposition has been talking about the, international, the, um, the hospital that you mentioned earlier. And the government has been punching holes in it. One of the things, though, that is interesting is that the opposition is accused of not presenting plans. However, since it has now been projecting this plan, it was the first to launch its manifesto. The, the ULP administration, which is the Ralph Gonzalez administration, has now been punching holes in them, whether or not they're feasible, whether or not studies were done, whether or not... Um, NDP is capable enough to implement these plans. Another interesting point is over the past couple of years, the opposition, which is the New Democratic Party, has been talking about setting up a ministry of the private sector. And the Ralph Gonzalez Party now is talking about setting up a department of the private sector. So those are, for me, I consider to be the main talking points um, during this campaign. Jobs, healthcare, and... Um, and the private sector. Okay, now we know that a, a big issue in the Caribbean right now is the state of each country's finances. What are either mm -hmm. parties saying about the state of St. Vincent and the Grenadines' its economy? Um, well, I think both parties have actually admitted that things are not the best. The incumbent, however, is comparing it to other countries, while the opposition, the New Democratic Party, has been seeing that compared to the other Eastern Caribbean countries, St. Vincent and Grenadines is not doing enough. St. Vincent and Grenadines is lagging behind. Um, now, the New Democratic Party, Adam Eustace is an economist, a seasoned economist. So they are presenting here someone who has experience as an economist being better positioned to take us out of the rather financial crisis or the, fin the economic struggles that we are going through. But then the ULP, which is the Ralph Gonzalez, is saying Ralph Gonzalez has been able to steer the ship during the most difficult times. Let him continue to do so. Okay. Now we know of the United Labour Party led by Dr. Ralph Gonzalez and the New Democratic Party led by opposition leader Arnim Eustace as the main contenders for this political race. Has any other political party or independent candidate put their hat forward? Yes, we have. Um, I think, I, I think we, have, we should be having about 43 candidates contesting the 15 constituencies, 15 seats up for grab. There is the newly formed Democrat, Democratic Republican Party. That's someone who was a young lady who was actually part of the ULP and was a former senator of the New Democratic Party. She launched six candidates last week and her manifesto. And we have 
the Simpson and Grandin's Green Party that has, um, I think it's 14 candidates for the 15 seats. Um, so we have those, we have, so we have four, four political parties contesting the general election, no independence. Just. Okay. Now, loyalty to, to traditional parties in the Caribbean, it, it's kind of the norm. It, and I'm not sure what the case is in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but do these parties stand a chance of wresting powers from Dr. Ralph Gonzalez and his ULP? Not the Green Party, nor the Democratic Republican Party. The main contender is the New Democratic Party. Um, and it's the new voters who are really going to decide who, who, who is going to take government. The old folks, the old folks are traditional voters. They vote along a party line. And both parties, well, the, the New Democratic Party and the New York have been staring the campaign. They have been, their strategy has always been to pull the young people with them. And entertainment is becoming part, part of this strategy. So I think this weekend we should be getting, um, Taris Riley in and some other entertainers by both political parties. And that is a way of trying to hype up the young people. But in terms of the, the other two political parties, they, they are non-contenders as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Now, what's the political climate like at this time? Are we seeing a calm, level-headed race, or is there an animosity at any, of any kind plaguing the lead-up to Election Day? You, 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 around this time, you'll always hear reports of a bit of animosity, but nothing major. What we have is the, um, the and there's a reverie that comes with it, the, 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 the the painting of the streets, the graffitis and so on around, and every mm, deep supporters wearing, or staunch supporters rather, wearing their colors throughout the, the day or throughout the week. We have, we have in certain communities where they will gather from morning to evening or morning to night and they'll play music, knock pan, whatever the case is. You go through the streets of Kingstown and Almost every conversation is about what you think about politics, what you think about the election, who you think is going to win, etc. But nothing to be alarmed about, nothing to be concerned. How, I must mention, though, that two weeks ago, on the northwestern side of St. Vincent, the ULP candidate had to fire off about two shots to calm a crowd because it was getting heated, but not, 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 no, major, no major reports of, of or no reports of major violence, anything of that sort. Okay. Um, is what's the traditional political climate in St. Vincent and the Grenadines? When you say traditional, what do you mean? Is it do you usually have turbulent elections, or are they usually fairly calm and peaceful? They're they they're, they're, they're very calm, very calm. On election day itself, it's even it's even calmer. So nothing nothing to be alarmed about. Nothing. We we don't we don't have major reports of, of violence. You might have little village picketing or whatever the case is, but nothing where people will end up in the hospital or anything of that sort. But I, I remember when I was much smaller, we used to have motorcades, and I think it was eventually banned, where there was some stoning and one person died. I know people who got in serious injuries after. But since then, we have not really had any election violence. Now, as mentioned earlier, <clears throat> sorry, one political analyst is predicting victory for Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, citing a lack of presence on the part of opposition leader Arnim Eustace. Are you of the same view? No, I am not of the same view. I don't think there's a silence on the part of the opposition. I think the opposition has been speaking out more than be now than before. Um, I will not say that it is leaning towards Ralph Gonzalez, neither would I say it's leaning towards the opposition. I can say it's a, it's a tight, it's, it's, it's a tight race and there is no clear winner. I believe the campaign, this campaign and how the both political parties run the campaign will determine who is going to win. Because here we have, we have Ralph Gonzalez having been in office for 14 years and we have seen and we see what he has done and what he and how he has been operating. What we have now is an alternative who has been out of office for the past 14 years, promising something different. And so the question is, will Vincentians say, better the devil we have now 
the devil we know than the one we don't know? Or will they say, we know what we have and we don't like what we have? Or as much as we appreciate what we have, better is being offered to us. Let's give a chance. And that's the question. And the uh, opposition, as much as it has gotten accusations of being quiet, not, not having plans, etc., because it is now leading the way to some extent in that it, is, it was the first to bring out the manifesto, bring it out online. They have been utilizing a lot of technology and so on. The question is, will Vincent have enough confidence in the opposition? Okay. And, and these, these are the questions that are going to be asked during this campaign and how they run their campaign. Will it tell me at the end of the day who will win the next general elections? And that's how we end tonight's in-depth. Thank you very much for joining me, Mr. Thank Koshy. you for having me. I appreciate it.